Hello, this is day 91 of Bible in One Year, our Bible text for today, Judges chapters 13 to 15, and then Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 49. So to begin, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've given us. Thank you for the blessings, the guidance, the wisdom, and thank you, Lord, for all the learnings, and uh, we pray that you would continue to guide us, help us, Lord, in our daily activities, the tasks that we have. And we ask for forgiveness for our sins, our mistakes, our shortcomings. Lord, help us to overcome them and to be more uh, active and participative in the ministry and to be more faithful in the vision to your word. Lord, enlighten us as we read your word. Uh, please allow us to understand the message and for us to be able to apply it in our daily lives. And I'd like to also pray for the salvation of our lost loved ones uh, and to pray for everyone who are taking part in the ministry, our pastors, the missionaries, uh, the Bible school teachers and students, as well as the church members, especially the church workers, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's begin with Judges chapter 13. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord, and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send, which thou didst send come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and, and the angel of God came again unto the woman, as she sat in the field, but no, Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste, and ran, and showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man that appeared unto me, that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And the Noah said, Now let thy words come to pass, how shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my names, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on, for it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord, and Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering, and a meat offering at our hands, neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, at, 
at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtaul. Judges chapter 14 And Samson went down to Timnath, and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up, and told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion, an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the women, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to thake her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the women, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young man to do. And it came to pass when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him, and Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare with me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. But if ye cannot declare with me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth the riddle, that we may hear, hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in these three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle. Lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire, have ye called us to take that we have. Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him, and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell thee, tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days, while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him, and she told the riddle, the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not flowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and they went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, spoil, and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Judges chapter 15 But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wet harvest, that Samson visited his wife for the king. And he said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her, therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes and took firebrands, and turned tail to tail, and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines, and burnt up both the shops and also the standing corn, with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who had done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, 
because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and tie with a great slaughter, and he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock at them. Then the Philistines went up and fished in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson, are we come up, to do to him as he had done to us? Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam, and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords, and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his hands loosed from off his hands, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, hips upon hips, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramat Lehi. And he was sore at thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God cleaved an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water. There out, and when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof An Hakori, which is Le, which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years. All right, then with Judges chapters thirteen to fifteen, and I go to Luke chapter six, and read uh, verses twenty-seven to forty-nine. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as you would that man should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to, to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do this even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Shall man give into your bosom? For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but every one that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out this, the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit, for us, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gutter the grapes, a good man out of the good, 
good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and do with them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house, and dig deep, and laid a foundation on a rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Okay, so we're done with our Bible reading for today. So for the reflection or something to share. So in Judges chapter 13 to 15, we read about Samson and he's got a wife, which is a woman of the Philistines, and it did not end well with them, right? And then in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 49, uh, I would say among the gospel books, Luke is kind of my favorite. Uh, there are a lot of parables there with great lessons. And um, for this one, I'd like to focus on uh, the two brothers, right? I cannot tell your brother to, you know, you cannot tell your brother that you're going to pull out the mold that is in his eye when you yourself has a mold in your eye. So the mold pertains to the sin. So if you are a sinful man, and of course, even though we are sinners, yes, we can, you know, we have a way to discern which is right and which is wrong, which is a sin and which is not. And even so, sometimes we still sin. And of course, when we see other people, uh, when we observe what they do, so we can also, in a way, say if they're doing something sinful or not, right? But, uh, what do you call this? Sometimes... It's not proper for us to tell them to, uh, you know, correct their ways when we ourselves haven't corrected our own, uh, you know, sin, sinful activities or the sins that we have committed. So before we can, uh, you know, ask others to turn back, turn their backs on their sins to correct their ways, we ourselves, we must first do that we should you know uh, repent of our sins turn back to god uh, turn our backs to sin and be a vision to the lord and to do his will again right and it is only then that in a way we would have uh not really a right but it would be more proper you know that we ask someone else our brothers or sisters to do the same okay because we've already done it but you know if we haven't corrected ourselves then we have in a way we don't have a right to tell others to correct their ways when we ourselves haven't done that all right so that's i think that's the main thing that i like to focus on on today's reading right before we tell others to correct their ways, we must first correct our own ways and to be more faithful to the Lord. All right, so that's it for this one. Again, this is day 91 of Bible in One Year. And we've read Judges chapter 13 to 15 and then Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 49. Thank you and God bless.